Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing um, the ultimate Harry Potter experience tag that's been going around on YouTube. If I'm right, the first one who did it is Stars Books. Um, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Unfortunately, uh, my shelf where I have all of my Harry Potter books right now is completely covered with my sister's junk like over that way um, on the other side uh, so you don't want to see that and I know she'll get mad if I move it so uh, <laughs> whenever if I ever get around to doing a bookshelf tour you can see all of my money that I have wasted on <laughs> Harry Potter books like different versions just because I needed to have them Anywho, um, also because I'm a very negative person, I've decided to include my least favorite of a couple of these things, too, because that's just how I roll. Anywho, so the first thing is favorite Harry Potter book. And, well, for the longest time, that was Prisoner of Azkaban, because that was just a really strongly plotted book, I think. And I just, I loved, I get to meet some of my favorite characters, like Professor Lupin, I loved him and I loved his class and um, the twists like with the Marauders in the past and then the whole climax at the end I thought was just brilliant and I was 12 years old at the time and that was what made me turn into a hardcore Harry Potter fan because I loved the first two books but it wasn't until I read that I'm like oh my god I am in love but sadly well not sadly happily that book <laughs> was um overshadowed just a little bit by number seven Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows this is since I read it when you know it first came out almost four years ago now this has been my favorite book of all of them not that they're not all brilliant but this one it just has I love how it ties up all practically of the loose ends that you know have been left hanging in the book you get to find out everything that happened to everyone mostly uh, the, all, there's all these brilliant emotional scenes in it there's still funny parts too but then there's all these really sad parts like Godric's Hollow with Harry at his parents grave it makes me cry every time especially when I listen to the audio book version oh god um, <laughs> and there's just so much in it I don't, I'm not gonna just list everything but it's just it's jam-packed full of goodness and I love it uh, next let's just add my least favorite Harry Potter book which is the fifth one Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and uh, just I've never actually read this version the British edition but just for variety I'm gonna show you this one because I don't like most of the British covers but I like this one, and they I got a couple of them at um, the airport in Rome a few years ago. Thankfully, there there were only two there. Otherwise, I would have bought them all, and I had like no money left when I came home. <laughs> anyway, uh, the fifth book I have kind of some problems with. Well, I do like it as compared to a lot of other things. I feel like compared to the other books, it's pretty weak. It's very, very cold to me because, first of all, Harry is not the lovable kid that, you know, I could relate to in the first four books. And he's just, and I understand why, but he was, you know, Caps Lock Harry, as he's referred to on the internet. And he was just yelling at everyone all the time, with good reason, but it wasn't pleasant for me to read about. And uh, there was the whole thing with school, nothing was going right with Umbridge and... It was just kind of depressing. Um, then I also, one of my biggest problems that I had with it, because that I don't know if I could necessarily call a flaw, it just made me feel down, uh, was I think it was bloated. And it's the longest one, but Goblet of Fire was nearly as long, and Deathly Hallows was nearly as long, but I don't feel like those were bloated. This I felt like had excess material that should have been left on the cutting room floor. There's these long parts, like the whole chapter of Hagrid's tale, which is you have to read, like, in Hagrid's accent. <sighs> Written down everything about, you know, what happened with the giants. And it was not entertaining. And there was Grop and 
blah, all that crap. I don't know. I felt like I could have cut some of the fat and it would have been better off. But I, this is not to say I hate it. I mean, I still love it because it's Harry Potter and there's a lot of great things in it. But um, just in comparison to others, I feel it's a little, well, especially when I read it the first time, it's a bit of a letdown. Next is favorite Harry Potter movie, and, uh, well, Deathly Hallows Part 2 isn't out yet, only a couple more weeks. Maybe that will end up being my favorite, I really hope so, but, um, until then, it is Deathly Hallows Part 1. And I actually got a Blu-ray player, so I could get the Blu-ray with the special features, including the maximum movie mode. This still is, this is a triple pack that has a regular DVD in it too. I'm that big of a dork, okay? I have multiple versions of all of the books, plus the audiobooks, and multiple versions of the DVDs. Money perhaps better spent elsewhere, but no, for me, that was the best thing to do, I think. Um, I really love this movie because I like how, you know, splitting it up, the seventh book in two parts, I think it was a really good move because uh, there was so much that was so important in that book and now it, none of it had to be sacrificed. We could get all of the important scenes in there, which I really, really liked. Um, the acting, especially by the trio, because it's just the three of them for most of the movie. They all really stepped up their games. They were all just top-notch, really, really sold their characters to me. I loved that. Um, the movie, it wasn't perfect, per se. I mean, what is what is movie adaptation is perfect. But it was pretty close, and I really, really loved it. Um, until that one, until I saw this one, um, Deathly Hallows, my favorite was actually Order of the Phoenix, which you might think is weird because that's um, my least favorite book. But... I like it because uh, it cut out a lot of the fat from the book that I feel was excess. Perhaps a little bit leaning toward too much, but uh, I, I still think it worked. And the only thing that kind of brought it down for me was Emma Watson was still getting over her wacky eyebrow phase and over-enunciating, overacting phase. She wasn't as bad as Angabo to Fire. But uh, she still it wasn't until Half Blood Prince, I think. I don't know if she took an acting class or what, that she really became a natural actress. And then, of course, she and everyone else got even better in this one, which I really love. Anyway, on to my least favorite movie. <laughs> um, and this is not to say I don't like this at all either. I don't hate it. But Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Because. This movie, while the first two are really, really kiddie movies, the books were, were more for children, too, at that point especially. But I feel like in the the first two movies, especially in this one, they it's like almost like they went out of their way to make it cheesy as possible. Uh, especially the ending of Chamber of Secrets. Um, I don't know anyone who actually likes that ending. It is by far the worst ending to any of the movies, even though I really I don't like most of the endings. I feel like Steve Clovis did a lot of really cheesy ones. The first one was okay. The, then, like, the third one with the freeze frame, I didn't like either. Actually, I can't really think of any of the endings that I do like, except maybe, um, uh, well, 1, 5, and 7 were... Not, were pretty good, I think, and then the others were not. Um, this one is takes the cake as being the worst and the cheesiest. When Hagrid comes back from Azkaban, and everyone in the Great Hall is automatically silenced, and then Harry has to say, oh, there's no Hogwarts without you, Hagrid. And, okay, that in itself is bad enough, but then the whole school starts clapping uh, I don't know. First of all, in the books, I'm given the impression that no one besides the trio really likes Hagrid anyway. So that was just unbelievable. And it was just so over the top cheesy. I mean, come on. Are, who are they catering to for that five-year-old? A little bit over the top, even for the first couple of movies, I think. Um, and for the last thing, the your ultimate Harry Potter experience. Well, as a runner-up, I would have to give... Going to 
all of the midnight releases I went to, which was for, hmm, nearly... Okay, all of the movies, starting with the fourth one, I went to the midnight releases. Before that, I was too young, and I had to get a ride, and so they weren't about to take me to the midnight showing. Uh, and for the books, they only went to the midnight release for the last two, because, again, I was too young, and my parents didn't want me to go that late at night, even though it was in summer, but whatever. Um... Those would all be up there because it's just crazy being with all, you know, other Harry Potter nerds like yourself and uh, <laughs> not feeling out of place or ridiculed for being a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> and, uh, but I think my, the ultimate one would be uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter theme park, um, which I got to go to back at the end of March. I went to Universal and I got to go to the, you know, the Harry Potter part of the park obviously and oh my god it is just so amazing unfortunately I felt like it was too small because it was like jam-packed it was at capacity so many times over the four days that we were there that they would have to stop you going in and they would have to give you a, like a ticket to come back at a certain time it's pretty bad I feel like it needs to be expanded right now there's only Three rides, but they're all really good. My favorite is um, the Forbidden Journey, which is it's a simulated roller coaster where you get to go. It's like you're on a broomstick following uh, Harry, and you get to you go through Hogwarts. And then there's also like creatures and stuff too, not just on uh, the screen. And you go through across the Quidditch pitch and the forest, and it's really cool. Um, I actually even paid twenty five dollars the first time I rode that to get a picture of us on the ride. I just wanted to remember that experience so much. Uh, I know, I'm sappy that way. Then there's uh, Flight of the Hippogriff, which is uh, more of a family-friendly kitty roller coaster, which is actually not... I'm not a big roller coaster person, so maybe coming from me this doesn't mean much, but I, it was actually not as stupid and boring and slow as I thought it would be. It's actually... it's. It's fun enough. I mean, and I think kids will really like it. And um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't awful, but it is more geared towards the younger crowd. Um, and then the last ride is the Dragon Challenge, which is there's actually two different uh, tracks in that one, so it's kind of like two coasters in one. And that's more like a hardcore roller coaster with a red and a blue dragon. I think one is the Chinese Fireball, and I'm guessing the other one is the Hungarian Horntail. And they're both slightly different. First time I rode that, I screamed the entire way. And then the rest of the times, I had to be completely silent because I was hoarse. I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, so I really, I'm not a big fan of that type of roller coaster because I don't like my head to be jostled around. And I find it's uncomfortable. But I had to ride it because it was Harry Potter. And that's just, that's how I am. I'm crazy. And I thought it was... It was actually really good, and yeah, I would ride it again. I mean, I rode it multiple times already. Um, and uh, I also forgot to mention for the Forbidden Journey, um, if you're in the line, I mean, at least the group line, uh, you get to go through, the line goes through Hogwarts, and you're actually, it's like you're in the building, and the portraits talk and have conversations and stuff, and that's really cool, too. Um, you also, they have uh, the three broomsticks there to eat at, which the food is just kind of like British version of uh, theme park food, um, along with its prices, but <laughs> it's not bad. Um, just the, and butterbeer is, was really good too, and it was just so amazing to like feel like you're in that world and for such a short time. Too. I wish I could go back. I hope they expand the park because I definitely will go back if they do. Anywho, uh, this was Mars Peach, one of the craziest Harry Potter fans in the world. I'm sure there's crazier people than me, but uh, <laughs> that was my version of the Harry Potter experience.